Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at the Excel Dynamic Arrays. Uh, so basically the new functions we have available to us in Excel for making a few scenarios particularly well, a great deal easier for us. Uh, in this particular video we're going to be looking at uh, dynamic drop down lists uh, and as you can see we've got a couple of points we've marked here the parts we want to cover off. So we want to use these new formulas to one give us a dynamic drop down list so based on department so you can see in department we've got a number of different departments uh, technology finance HR and business but in our drop down we only want it to be a unique list so we only want each of those departments to appear only once and we're going to be populating that here in column F uh, based on that value in column F we want to then do a dependent drop down list uh, for application. Uh, so by that what I mean is if we were to select finance in our first one here then we'd only want to have one of these three or these three apps available in our second drop down uh, and likewise if we were to select a different uh, department such as business we would then only see the business, uh, business applicable applications. Uh, so obviously this is really important and a really helpful function to us in Excel uh, and as you'll see as we go through this the formulas or the functions we're going to be using to do this are so uh, a lot easier a lot more straightforward than they used to be uh, once upon a time you'd be doing uh, line upon line or maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration but you'd be doing very extensive formulas to get this same outcome but now we've got some functions that allow us to do this very simply and straightforward once we've been able to get those drop downs, we're then going to use a couple of other functions now available. Uh, so we're going to use filter so that we can ensure that our lists are in alphabetical order. So as you can see for both of these, where it's department, obviously you can see it's not in A to Z order. And likewise with application, it's sort of mixed all over the place. Um, oh, sorry, I've, tried, I've jumped ahead. So sort is the last thing we're going to do, sort them A to Z. And the third point here, what I just messed up, is to filter uh, the list data. So uh, obviously making sure that we only have those values that appear once. So what we'll do, without further delay, we'll jump straight into the video and get straight to it. Uh, and I'll try my best to talk through the functions as we go through them, uh, and hopefully also just keeps it all, all, all nice together. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build out our unique list of departments. For that, all I'm going to do is do our new function of unique, what you can see there. And all I'm going to do is just select this first column. The data in, or this table I have over here has been created as an Excel table. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, you can uh, just go check out one of our previous videos, uh, as we touched on it before. Alternatively, I'll give you a quick tip. It's up here under this insert tab. Uh, so very simple need to do, but there you go. There's a tip if you want to try and work it out yourself, else just go and check out some of our previous videos and you'll see straight how to do that. Because it's a table, all we need to do is hover above this column, so you get this little black arrow, select, and you can see that that uh, department column has been selected. The unique function does give us a couple of uh, optional um, additions that we can add here, so by column and exact once, but we don't need to worry about those. Just gonna close our brackets, hit enter, and you can see that we now have a unique list of values. And as you'd have noticed, the, it's been expanded. So what I mean by that is I was just adding the formula into this uh, row here, row 15, and depending on the values, that is then going to expand the results as required. Uh, a good way to demonstrate that is if I was to add a new department on here, so let's say um, catering, you can see that it's automatically populate in there for us. And if I was to remove catering, then it's been removed. Uh, oh, I've got need to make sure I delete that line when I do that, uh, delete rows. And you can see it's automatically removed for us. So what it will do is it will expand or, or retract as required uh, based on the values available to us. And just that one function alone really demonstrates the power that we now have available in these new functions in Excel. So in order to create uh, the drop down list from these values here, all we need to do is go into our, our, the cell in which we want to have the drop down. And as you know, because you'd have probably checked that or you would have checked out our previous videos, we then go into our data validation. We're going to select the list option of list. And when we come to do our source, 
All we need to do is select the cell in which our range is going to start from, so the first value there. And rather than select a range, as we would have previously done, all we need to do is enter a hashtag at the end of that range. And what that hashtag does, it enables uh, the function, or when it comes to data validation, what it's going to do is it'll say, right, go to this reference of F15, and then expand as required based on however many values are available there. As simply as that. Um, so it's a lot more, it's very technical what it's doing, but in terms of obviously the entry we need to do for it to do that, it's very simple with that hashtag. So what's with that? Go OK. And now when we select our drop down, we can see that we've got all of those options available to us there. Now I was going to add catering back in one more time. And let's say we have a catering app number one. So that's ready. Uh, and when we come into our drop down, you can now see it's been updated to now include catering. So very simple and straightforward how to do, but there you go, very quickly we've managed to add that first drop down list. So the second one of dependent drop down for application. So we're going to be using a different function now, and that function is called filter. And what that allows us to do is to filter the results uh, in application here based on the value that is in our drop down. So it might help if I just select one of those to start off with. So let's go for finance. So I want my list to start here. What I'm going to do is go equals filter, open brackets. So this time I want uh, this list here. So I want an array of there. So I'll just hover above that column. Go to the next part. So I've got include. And this is where I need to enter my criteria. So I only want to include those where this column is equal to the value in our first drop down. Close our brackets, hit enter, and you can see that's now expanded for us. So for finance, we know that we've got these three apps here, and that's the three we have. If we're to train, train, change the drop down to uh, business, you can now see that we have the business applications only available to us now. So that's that done. And lastly, all we need to do, as we did with this unique drop down here, is we go enter data validation, as a list and our source is going to be the first or, or the starting point for where this range will be or the first row followed by our hashtag and select enter and you can now see as this gets changed over here so technology our drop down will also get updated as well and you can see the values obviously replicated underneath here for what will be in that drop down and i guess the best best or the best ways of practice for this is you'd probably have this information here, uh, the drop-down values, uh, maybe on a, a separate sheet or hidden away from these drop-downs here, uh, just obviously to, to make it easier and maybe easier on the eye for the user so they know what they're dealing with. But that's how you do it. So the next part we've done, um, so we've ticked off the dynamic drop-down list, so we know how to do one of those. Uh, and we know how to do the dependent sub drop down list. And I guess to be honest, two and three are kind of the same really, uh, because we need to use that filter list data to be able to populate our sub drop down. So let's just mark those as both yellow so we know we've done all three of those. So let's go like that, just so we can track where we are. So the last thing we need to do is to sort the list data. So ideally, we don't want these to be in random order, we want them to all be in uh, order of A to Z. All we're going to need to do to do that is just make a simple update to our function. So I was going to go at the beginning of unique here, and I'm going to enter sort, open brackets. And like with our earlier function, you can see we have a number of options available to us, but the default value is A to Z, what I'm going to be using. So all I need to do is close brackets, hit enter, and you can see it's now sorted that perfectly in alphabetical order for us. So it's worked perfectly. So we've got business, catering, finance, human resources, and technology. And lastly, we'll just apply that to the, uh, the, the dependent drop-down list as well. So we've got sort, open brackets, close brackets, hit enter. And there we go, sorry, I just <laughs> pushed the wrong button, not pushed the wrong button, but something went amiss there. But you can now see that we have them organized as well. So one last time, let's select finance. And you can now see we have our dependent drop-down pop uh, populated as well in perfect uh, alphabetical order. And let's do one more change here. So let's go into business. And you can see now the business ones, the applications are all in alphabetical order as well. 
So I well, hope you enjoyed that uh, that tutorial. Uh, it's a bit fast paced and I sort of skipped through quite a lot of that quite quickly. Uh, but I hope it is at a pace that enabled you to uh, one understand the topic and also uh, yeah basically just understand the topic without obviously making this video far too long. If you do have any questions at all, please do leave a comment uh, below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video, do please give the video a like. Uh, it's only not only appreciated by myself as it shows me more content that you would like to see, uh, but it also does help that YouTube algorithm to help more people see our content. And lastly, if you it's the first time you come across the channel or you've watched a few of our videos, please make sure you've subscribed to the channel and hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our videos uh, as soon as they come out. So thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.